Hello everyone, welcome. Good to have you here, Paul Tranny, with the one and only Marvin Schweibold. What's up guys? Joining us straight from Germany. He flew in <laughs> yesterday after an ordeal that we could talk about later. Yeah. But it's good to have you here. Yeah, nice <laughs> good to be to here. Have nice to be you here. here. Fantastic, so give him a warm welcome. Good to see you, Giovanni and Anne and Anel and Hotchberg Design, maybe. Yeah, Hopebook Design, yeah. Okay, thank Shout you. Shout out to those guys. Very cool. Nice. And uh, you're gonna do the entire stream in German. Yeah, I'm talking in German, so. <laughs> yeah, he's talking in German right now. We just have amazing translation capabilities. Exactly. It's amazing. Exactly, that's how it goes. <laughs> but it's good to have you here. We have you today and tomorrow, and I think you're gonna be joining Talon on uh, Friday as yeah. well, which is awesome. So we're happy to have you here. It's good to see Michael Crabtree as well, as a former guest of ours and uh, everything, Annie. So give him a warm welcome. Want to know also where you're from. You're flying in from, uh, you live in Hamburg? Berlin, 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 Berlin right now, off. yeah. Flew in from, from Hamburg. Okay. Gotcha. Martin Ellis, shout out to you. Very good. Nice. Time. So we have you for two hours, and actually I want to go over the whole schedule if I could really fast, because we got a super cool lineup. Uh, it's been really fun just hanging out with everybody. We have Mar Marvin today for two hours as he entertains and educates us with some amazing design work. Olga will be joining us with the one and only Gus Martin, and Melody Sabori will be uh, with us from one to three. So that's all day today and tomorrow. So hang out and uh, ask us questions, and just I'm sure you're gonna learn something, which is good. We also have uh, random giveaways that we're gonna have. We'll have one in about 30 minutes, and then we also have a design challenge today as well. So uh, cool. and this is in 30 minutes. We're basically gonna give away a sweet uh, Moo uh, sort of sketchbook or notebook. Uh, you know, and once you have that, it's like the ideas start flowing. It's like magic. It's a magic moo notebook, I guess. But we give that away for free uh, to you or to uh, to a winner, just randomly. So do that in 30 minutes. Then we also have a chat and win, or excuse me. Then we also have a challenge as well. So we have a challenge tab uh, that you will see right over here. And today. As you can see, this is actually the um, in the challenge tab. Today we invite you to design and prototype an airline web page experience in Adobe XD. Nice. So airline web page experience in Adobe XD. And uh, you can kind of start with this design. As I click right there, you can go ahead and see that this is roughly what it's uh, an inspiration for a potential uh, airline design. So that's cool. Feel free to kind of get involved right there. It's a web page. So have fun there. Really, we were just giving you, you know, a reason to create. Maybe that will end up in your portfolio, which is awesome. We'll pick a winner at the end of the day. Uh, and then also tomorrow we're going to do portfolio reviews just so everybody knows. So we will uh, be doing that. So, all right. Enough housekeeping. I uh, Hopefully that works. We're good. Well, I'm good. I'm How good. You doing? I'm, I'm fine. I'm perfect. <laughs> you're ready. To, you're ready to get to work. I'm ready to get to work. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> your flight was delayed 24 hours. Let's go yeah, ahead and say it. So you, flight, you're yeah. ready to. You're ready to rock. Listen, yeah. like, I got. I got. I got work to do. I got to make it happen. Yeah. You have notes right here. I have you wanna, notes. Shall we show that right now? Uh, and you yeah, definitely. I did some work on the plane. And and by the way, just check out uh, Marvin's like Behance page, for instance, because you do some like awesome work. You know, Thank you, you being an art director and. Our director, like freelancer right now, just really, really inspired and think you do pr great work, by the way. So happy Thank to have you Thank you very much. There. Yeah. Go ahead and set it between us, if you don't mind. Might be a little easier, if that's okay. Yeah. Zoop. Right, so basically, um, I'm gonna be designing a website for this company called UniQ. Um, they work with perfumes and fragrances, um, and we're kind of, we're kind of, um, go and go through all the wireframes I've been doing for them, some user flow, and then kind of jumping into some screen design. Um, I think I can just kind of quickly go through what yeah. I've been doing so far. So I have kind of like a preloader that I want to quickly scribble, and then a welcome intro page with a menu burger and some small uh, details over here. Um, we have goes into like a small explanation of what the whole product is, a call to action, uh, some image galleries throughout the whole kind of um, website are really important because mm -hmm. we did a whole like campaign shooting for these guys. How does it work? Um, 
And this is this is. Did you say this is perfume subscription? Yeah, is that a yeah, good exactly. Way to... uh, perfume subscription product, I guess I'd say. It's like their okay. idea is to have twelve different fragrances a year instead of just one. Oh, it's okay. kind of like uh, their whole their whole thing. Um, on the intro page, I also really want to show like the product, have like a small view of what the product is, and go into some kind of like details of, of like cool perks you get if you subscribe to the whole okay. um, project. And I mean, these scribbles are like really rough, but that's usually how I just always start. You know, it's a good way mm -hmm. to kind of like get your ideas down on paper and yeah. just kind of like map out what you want to do in general. Yeah. And I think that's like a really important um, step. Uh, yeah. When you're first um, designing. Um, mm, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Show some more of these. Don't have to talk Looks about good. All of them. Yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll go into this in it detail. It looks like you have a lot going on too. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, there's a, there's a lot of pages we can we can design and, and look at. Well, very cool. Um, yeah. I think I'm just gonna just start. You. We'll just dive into. Should we dive into it? I Let's think, do it. I think we should. Right. Let's I get some work done. Time to. Yeah. Kind of get Definitely. paid is what I like to say. It's like, let's get some work done. <laughs> All right. And then we don't talk the rest of the time. <laughs> We're just busy working. <laughs> exactly, yeah. No more talking then. Um, Hello, good to have you here. Uh, we are going to be doing some UX and UI design. Again, this is uh, sort of a website site, so you have a larger sort of format, yeah. homepage, if you will, which is cool, with a grid set up, by the way. Exactly. How is that? How is that happening? How's that happening? Uh, you can you can choose kind of like the grid layout right over here. What you what what you want to work with? I'm a big fan of working with grids. I think it's really important to kind of like um, have a structure and guidelines for when you just like start designing. So um, yeah, you know, there's uh, the margin the margin here, and um, I'll go. Mo I'll talk about the grid in a minute when I kind of start. Um, yeah, it's 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 definitely important. I think I think. I think Raphael brings up a good question. Like, do you, when you sketch out ideas, you looked at other related apps or websites for inspiration, or did you go off your your head, your general experience? Like, where do these designs come from, or these thoughts? Um, I mean, I think when you're starting to just like scribble on paper, it's more about mapping out the product, the idea, and how many pages you know you really have to design. I don't really go into a lot of details when I'm doing this. It's just getting the information on paper, so I know. Hey, I'm going to do 20 different pages for this website. But I think once you start going into the real UI, uh, it's important. Um, it's important to kind of mood board. You know, look at mm -hmm. competitors, look at different companies, look at stuff that you just really like yourself, and kind of start um, choosing fonts and picking like images that you think could, could be cool, you know, and just kind of like getting a look and feel for it mm -hmm. before you actually start diving into the design. Yeah, and it's always a, that's all, that's actually a really good question because you don't want, you, you want to do your research, but you don't want that research to like in necessarily influence your, your design too much because you might unknowingly kind of be borrowing from their stuff. Exactly, definitely, you know? yeah. So maybe you do, maybe you do start sketching right away because you have something in your head, and then definitely go look at your competition. For sure. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Because for one, you don't. You might. You might be unknowingly be like like ripping off another design or something. You don't want to do that. Yeah. So. And it is unknowingly sometimes. There's so much. I'd say good stuff out there already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that it's it's easy to to fall into that kind of trap, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I, honestly, I think if you're starting out, it's okay to like look at somebody's design and just see if you could recreate it or whatever. But obviously, doing something here for a client, you need to you know make sure it's yours and not somebody else's recycled, recycled work, recycled work. And you should know, like you were, I was reading you judge FWAs yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I started judging this year for FWA. Okay, that's really a lot of fun too. Um, and you get a just. A broad spectrum of how many websites are uploaded, what people are working on right now, how they're trying to experiment with animation and type and all that kind of stuff. It's really cool. A lot of fun, definitely. Yeah. Isn't that, is it Favorite Website Awards? Yes. That's favorite what it stands website, for. So everybody just knows it's like thefwa.com. Yeah. Let me see now if you want to check it out. But again, great place to get inspired. And. And I've been I've been just really inspired by a lot of your projects, man. 
Look at all this. Look at this fun stuff. And I know, I'm, I like how you did this. You're like, hey, I'm not the only one that works on this, but look at this. Oh, yeah. Isle of Dogs campaign. Yeah, that was a really beautiful project with a lot of very, very talented people. Right. Um, I was working on, on, on the social campaign for this, and um, my creative director, together with Betis Brial and Florian Morel, they were working on the, on the mm -hmm. app here. It's kind of like this virtual, like, trash bags that you could like tear open with your finger and receive and receive like real uh, treats and prizes. Hmm. Yeah, it was really, really cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, good client, very, very cool. nice, very nice assets to work I with. I love it. Yeah. I love all this texture, like this texture is, te that's awesome. Yeah. Like, and it's not a consistent texture, like look at this, like dot here, dots here, you know what I'm saying? Even the texture alone isn't, isn't, you know. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, it looks, just looks really good. So, and this is just one, so. Yeah. Check out Marvin's work. Super fun, man. Yeah. Yeah. You just sit there admiring your own work. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I was just. You're like, look at my work. Look at my work. Look at, look me. at me. Look at me go. <laughs> um, you have a job to do. I have a job Get to do. Get it done. Pick it a font. What font? Just like pick something just like temporarily. Um, Just kind of a default for now. Not really. Since I'm kind of like gonna jump into some of the screen design uh, going off my wireframes I chose two fonts that I want to work with right now this one here the big one is called chap it's from this Finnish German duo um, these guys here called Schick Toika I don't know if we can if we want to show this or not it's just this oh, yeah we can just really like cool book hold it up hold it up just so people can kind of see the cover and stuff. yeah, yeah. so it's kind of like uh, we were talking about that earlier, I like doing that, you know? I like looking at smaller type foundries that do just great typography work and seeing if I can just, you know, work with their kind of, work with their fonts and their stuff. Yeah, and I think what's cool about this book, it's, it's not just like showcasing the type, but like obviously like different ways to use it. Oh yeah, for sure. what it comes down to. Yeah, exactly. It, it shows like how many different styles does this font have. Um, and I kind of, I kind of like, you know, I got really inspired by some of like, the body text here was really beautiful, the yeah. way that works, and that they just sometimes just have very bold letters, you know, and, and numbers, mm -hmm. and it just works really well. On the, yeah, on the I, here. we were talking about this earlier, it's amazing how how good this looks large and actually very legible. Exactly. Reading it works yeah. great as body copy and as headline. Exactly, so it's you can you can easily play with it uh, on, on a whole website. Mm -hmm. uh, this was also really cool here, you know, it's like nicely spaced out, light, yeah. Font there. Yeah. Take note of that. That's yeah. just a great technique in general, right? It, definitely. That's I'm going to use that for like, like all, all my call to actions. Yeah. yeah. It looks really good, man. No, I like it. I yeah. think I think you did a good job. Picked a Daniel Barkley used Marriott Pro. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a uh, blue next. Very good font as well. So what, what, lab. for those of you who don't know, that was that was called a book. It's called a book. <laughs> B O O K, <laughs> and it has paper inside. And yeah, you read it. It's analog. Yeah. Yeah, it's old school. Um, this one in a second here. Right. So I'm kind of just like setting up my menu that I want to use for this for this for this layout here. I have my menu icon top left, and then I have the send catalog, a sign in, and FAQs. Um, and then I'm gonna just open up a box here and start adding images to this whole thing. <laughs> Just gonna go all the way down here. And then I have my images all here. Grab some images and, Definitely, and drop yeah. them in. <laughs> yeah, we, I did a, a whole shoot, a whole like campaign shoot um, with a friend of mine, a really good photographer from Germany. I'm gonna post his, his link in here later as well. And he was in charge for all of this for all of this great work you see here right now. Nice. Yeah, yeah that makes a world of difference right there. Yeah, and it's also so really nice. nice if it's a product where you can kind of like you can work on the photography, you can work on 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 kind of every aspect of the project. That's that's just something that's that's really good. Um, I'm gonna use a stroke for this font here. That's nice. Yeah. And that's just a good, that's a good technique. Uh, 
in general is, uh, you know, when you go that large with a font, like, do you go with a thin, you can go with a thin font, you can outline it like you're doing now. Yeah. Like, these little things, like, because you don't want it to obviously slap you in the face. De you yeah, definitely. I, I think especially here where, like, the product is already, like, really present, you know, it's there, people know what it's about, but kind of giving them, like, a small messaging um, without, you know, like, being too bold with it, you know, and too, mm -hmm. in somebody's face, I think is a nice. Yeah, that's already looking really good. That the font with like, yeah, this is progressing really yeah. nice in a short amount of time. Draw While you do that, I know you're gonna like lay out some of that content. Sure, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just so you know, and I think, yeah, I think Voodoo Val might have mentioned it, but basically we have the challenge I mentioned earlier. We had a challenge yesterday, and we need to basically award or we're picking the winner now. So our winner from yesterday's challenge was all about creating a uh, sort of a scooter uh, app experience with an overlay. And our winner is Gladstone Davis. Congratulations, Gladstone Davis. Yes, I'm stalking you now. Uh, and he designed a scooter rental mobile app. Let's take a look at it. We can post this in chat as well. Uh, I don't know if Gladstone's with us, but let's check this out. Look at this. Zoop. Animations. Great logo. Yeah, really right. This is a video, so I'm just letting it play. Oh, boop, boop. You see those animations? Select one, the other one gets smaller. Select the other one, the other one gets smaller. And then we have that nice picture with how much it costs. So you have to admit, this is pretty strong. This is a super strong design, really cool. Using a lot of auto animate as well, so. Congratulations to Gladstone Davis. Yay, Gladstone. No, he's not here. I don't think he is. Uh, nonetheless, great design. Feel free. Uh, this could be you uh, tomorrow, quite frankly. So feel free to enter your design into the challenge. And keep in mind, you're just going to be using the auto animate feature uh, to make an airline web page shine. Okay, and then here's this example of uh, animation, basically. Oh, there we go. Gladstone is here. Yeah. Good to have you here, man. Congratulations. You are a big winner. Yay. We're, you win, by the way, uh, one year of uh, Creative Cloud. So we had other great designs. Shout out to Ryan Ford. I don't know if he's here, but he did a great job as well. We had other really cool uh, designs. So Gladstone, you're the man, though. Yeah, Boy, I can't nice turn one. away for a second. Look at this. Yeah. Boom, boom. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna add some text here. Um, also, I always really like to do this um, when I start kind of like designing and thinking about what fonts I wanna use, building like a small style guide, especially with Adobe XD. It's really easy to add like character styles, to add colors and symbols, and kind of just link them to your screens. Mm -hmm. You know, you can build a you can build a call to action or a drop down menu, and if you want to change something, it's linked yeah. to all my screens later. You know, it's something so easy. So, if you just if it's you or the client or anybody just decides, hey, can we make this larger? Can we make it smaller? You can just you change it once here, and it, and it adapts over the whole kind of like yeah. screen design. That's really cool. No, I love it, and I like I like being able to visually see this because I love the assets panel. And you can categorize and rename things, but yep. it's nice visually being able to see how that actually looks. Yeah, for I like sure. This, I love this style guide. Yeah. Um, That's really good. This this totally helps the design come together faster. Right? Definitely. You're doing yeah. a headline, boom, picking headline one. Expect, apply. Yeah. And also, and also, it's just a great way to not kind of get lost. You know, you you don't have to. You, you kind of set out. You set perimeters and rules, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing with the grid as well. You're kind of giving yourself constraints and saying, I, I won't go further than, you know, maybe this margin here, or my headline will always be on the six, you know, column or something. And it kind of gives the whole website just like this consistency that it needs uh, once people start interacting with it so they don't get kind of, you know, lost. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Um, and you have a full right to change it at any point. Like, if sure. you're, you're still using that same... Uh, you know, character style, for instance, you decide to want to change it later on online because even as you start adding these headlines, maybe it's too big of a font or something, mm -hmm. depending. Who knows what? Yeah. But it's nice that you can just change it globally. Exactly. Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, and Devin, it's like a master page style guide. Love it. Yeah, I definitely. agree. Go back into my very disciplined asset folders here. <laughs> I love this. I love the idea of this too. So the website's basically like a subscription perfume site or cologne site, right? Yeah. Men and women, yeah? Yeah, okay. it's for both genders. Cool. Yeah. yeah. But that's cool. Like I would love to just get like a little one ounce sample of, you know, cologne each month and then be able to have like, will you have like a queue? Like maybe you could figure out Next month, I want this one. Exactly. Yeah, we're gonna go into that in, in a moment. Fun. But that's basically what it goes. What what happens? You have the whole like catalog. You can choose. Um, you kind of you can choose what 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 scent you want each month. You know. Yeah, that's very cool. And for those of you who are thinking this, yes, Marvin does smell fantastic. <laughs> he smells so good. Thank you. I don't so know much. what it is. It's like. It's like, I don't know. What is it again? Uh, molecule eccentric <laughs> one. It's not blue to Chanel for men, but that also is very good. Anel oh, really? Henning, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Anel, right. yeah. Blue de Chanel. Aqua de, Aqua de Gio. <laughs> Aqua de Gio was like really big for a moment. In high school, like, actually it's kind of a thing in high school, like what was the big cologne or perfume for you in high school? For was me? there like a scent? Yeah, was there like... Oh man, everybody was hooked what? on um, One Million. One Million, I don't know okay. if anybody knows that. Yeah, I it's, do know it, I've seen it. It's horrible, but everybody loved that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me it was Dracar Noir. Dracar Noir. Dracar yeah. Noir, remember that? Yeah, I remember um, that. Yeah. yeah. I just learned that, the unlink symbol. Yes, yeah. isn't that nice? It's nice, it's good. So if it's green, it's going to be a symbol. And also what you noticed, it was it was linked, it could have been linked back to the original document. So what that means is you could have a master document, just like you have your master guide page. Yeah. You could have like a master XD file that has all the icons. Yeah. And whoever's using all those icons can obviously, they'll get updated once the icon designer updates them. Ed Hardy makes cologne help us all. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's cool. I'm into it. CK1. Ah, Dennis. Pretty pixels or intuitive UX? What's the scope? The answer is yes, both pretty pixels and intuitive UX. Definitely. Because right. we really want to see how this flows. I think when. Talk about user experience on a web page. A lot of times it's like you, do you have things established in terms of reads? Like you know what what's gonna draw you in, where you need to go next, yeah. and what you want them to do, Yeah, right? It's Definitely. like from a business standpoint, that's what you're trying to do. But then you're also trying to like intrigue the user, right? And show them something new that they maybe haven't seen before or mm -hmm. you know, get their attention through some cool animations. Um, yeah. yeah, definitely. Voodooval went to school in the woods where we all smelled like pine trees. Were you raised by wolves, Voodooval? If so, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, so. You can choose here, you can choose yeah. here. Yeah. So. You can change the color on that though. Yeah. So basically, kind of like for this landing page, you want some kind of like introduction, you know, some a welcome page where people can like just see the product. And you kind of scroll down, get a little bit of information about the, what this actually does, and then it's I think always really interesting to have like image carousels. You know, people can click through and kind of get mm -hmm. like a whole like feel for this for this thing. And that was also one of the requests for um, designing this whole product, just to build like a small world around okay. this whole idea. You know. Um, and then I basically jump into this part here, four easy steps. It's kind of like, how, how do you register for this product? Mm -hmm. What do you do? What are the steps you need to do to, to, 
it's gonna be awesome. Like we're selling you at the top, building some intrigue, kind of like, kind of selling you really towards like, you want this, look at how gorgeous it is. Yeah. And this is how easy it is. Exactly, exactly. Very cool. I think that's And by that's the way, really what important. you're doing is like, is not easy in terms of the layout. Yeah. To have photos like offset or a not, which I absolutely love yeah. when a, f a f photo might, might be full screen and there's like, a chunk of it cut out maybe for type or whatever, but this like, it just visually makes it interesting and you have to make sure it's not like, it doesn't get like unbalanced. Exactly, So definitely, that's the yeah. tricky part. You I, want it off center, but you, it can't be unbalanced. Yeah, and right. I think that's the whole, that's the whole thing we can talk about as well is this making and breaking grid systems, right? You, you yeah. want, you need some parts, some anchor points that are always kind of like this, 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 the way this text is layouted, I'll try to make sure it always stays like that, right? But then, like you said, you can off-center an image or work with... I almost want this fo the text to be lined up with the photo. This one here? Yeah. We could do that too, sure. And, but I, I'm like, I also want, like, I guess do everything with purpose. Like, yeah. if it is offset, like, let me know why it's offset. Like, the reason it could be to just balance out the photo. So it could, you could, the I'm reason not why it's, do anything. Why it's you offset can... here is because I wanted to center it again with this font. Okay. The, the four easy steps, because it's basically the same kind of okay, like cool. headline. Because even when you moved it over, I actually didn't like it as much. And yeah. then I was like, oh, you're all right. It is better <laughs> like off to the side. And that's, that's also like, it's a whole iteration process all the time. You're kind of like tweaking little nuances and thinking about like all this kind of like, this empty space, you know, all this negative space you have here that kind of lets type and images breathe mm -hmm. on the page. And I think, which is underestimated, like, or undervalued, well, yeah, not valued enough is, like, space. Definitely, yeah. You don't have to fill it with stuff. No. But your clients no. do. Your clients are going to be like, Your clients hey, want you to fill you, it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> make, make the logo bigger. They the think, best, yeah. The best, <laughs> best thing I always hear. Ryan uh, Shelton ha wants to know how you break the grid without the break. breaking the, the, well, the UX. Well, um... I guess, I guess why I'm- You're not breaking any sort of UX. No. You're, you, 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 you have it balanced without it being symmetrical is what's happening, I feel. Yeah, definitely. It's all this gut stuff that you're just kind of going with. You can For continue sure. to work. I don't mean to throw you off. It's fun watching you work. Um, oh, you're good. But I think you started out strong, picked a great font. Yeah. You have gorgeous images. And then don't don't over design when you have two strong elements like that. You know you don't need to throw a texture in the background or no no you know do any fancy tricks. Right, this kind of nice. <laughs> uh, I really like this feature. Oh yeah, repeat grid. Right. Yeah. Look at you. It's pretty cool. And it's good to do that even if you just need to create duplicates of an object. Yeah. Like repeat grid and then just ungroup grid. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And and then change. The equivalent of copy pasting anything here. Less than a minute before chat and win. Super fun. That's coming up. And want to welcome Nomar from Puerto Rico. Good to have you here, my friend. The ace of space, Andreas. We have quite an international group with us this week. You being from Germany, we have Olga from Ukraine, and uh, yeah, Melody is Persian. So yep. we're like, you know, quite an international crowd. So, and people from Puerto Rico in the house, and other states and countries and cities that you might put in chat. But we'll get down into that in a second. Okay, good questions, uh, Dennis. Uh, to summarize uh, what this is, this is basically a landing page for um, a subscription, a perfume pr subscription service, yeah. right? Yeah. To summarize, for those who are just joining us. Bogota in the house. I love Bogota. Canada, Moldova. I've always wanted to go to Moldova. But you can see behind me, we have fireworks, and that means it's time for chat and win. So let's dive into that right now. Yeah. 
All right, welcome back, everyone. That's what we want to see, where you're from. Just type in where you're at right now, and uh, that's how you can enter chat and win. Be like, hi, from Italy. Fantastic. I'm from here. I'm from Denver. That's where I live. Although currently we're in San Francisco. And uh, basically we need to know that somebody's at the other end of your keyboard, because if we call your name, uh, we want to make sure you're able to answer and know that you've won. We're giving away a uh, Moo Notebook just for you being you, really, quite <laughs> frankly, and hanging out with us. San Diego, Utah, Ohio, Mordor, Italy, Sao Paulo. Nick is in San Francisco. And we also have our lucky winner, Lucas. Zavagli. Congratulations, Lucas Zavagli. You won a Moo notebook. We'll contact you through Behance. We'll send you a message, a little code, and then you can go ahead and redeem that. Congratulations, Lucas. It's just our way of saying thank you for hanging out with us today, learning stuff, you know, from each other, from Marvin, from Olga, from Melody, all day long. So thanks. We'll have giveaways like every segment as well. So congrats, Lucas. Everybody's super jealous of you. But everybody has a chance to win. Just hang out with us. That's perfect. Well, there we go. Even better. <laughs> and you're to are you toggling like the grid? Does the grid get in the way, like the, the different columns that you have in terms of visualizing it? Do you ever turn that off? Yeah, I mean. You are able to. Sometimes, sometimes you need to be able to just like Look at everything and see if this makes if, they, if, if it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. But um, especially in the beginning, I think it's uh, it's kind of important to just um, to just keep it like on and mm -hmm. and not get distracted by anything. Yeah, because you're still like you know sort of adding content and kind of like exactly yeah this adding content, um, moving stuff around, and trying to figure out how to make it kind of how to make it all work together. Yeah, right. Just adding more and more into it, so. It's nice to work with the group there. I think it's interesting because you're making this one page, uh, this yeah, one page landing page for uh, this perfume subscription service. I remember back in the day, we were like, oh, whoa, the fold. She's like, oh, you got to make sure this is above the fold or people are never going to see it. That was kind of like the thought back then. Like, oh, people, if you got to scroll, they're not going to, you know, so you ended up with all these pages with everything like maybe above the fold or whatever. Yeah. And now we're in like a day and age where it's like really just like one page scrollable websites. Sure. And yeah. getting right down to business. Definitely. Which is awfully yeah. nice. Um, yeah. I think, I think there's, there's reasons um, for, for both of those. But, um, you know, I, I think sometimes it can be interesting to have like a call to action right, right in your face, you know, to just like... Yeah, but but in this case, I want I want people to kind of like be able to scroll through it and kind of understand what this is about and, and learn about the product before they really exactly. And that's what you're doing. You're approaching it from like the consumers or the users' perspective. Yeah, like the business perspective is like, hey, I have this. You should buy this. Yeah, and the users should be like, this is. This is gonna. This is gonna make me uh, smell fantastic and it, it feel like m more attractive. You know all those other words. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna give me better s skin. It's gonna like improve my love life if I have this like <laughs> perfume or cologne. Right. You're selling the dream. You're selling the dream. Yeah. Right. Definitely. And I'm into it because when you smell good. Yeah. This guy smells pretty good. I'm making it really weird right now. This, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, fine. You're good. He knows I was scooting further away from me. You didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you smell. You're looking good. You showered. Got some cologne on. You like ready to take on the day. Definitely, and, yeah. And then the rest just falls into place. Boom. Uh, like these Hellab little... has some throwing some questions at us. How do you make sure you have a good vertical rhythm in Adobe XD for a better better user experience? Vertical rhythm. Yeah, I mean, I think in terms of like a vertical rhythm of a page, what we will need to do is like test this out, so preview it in a browser to see how everything sort of gets cut off. 
Like when you say rhythm, I want one thing to lead to the next thing. Definitely. You know, and it's almost good to show some text that's getting cut off at the bottom. I don't mean to answer for you. No, no, go for it, go for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, that's exactly, that's exactly right. Right, you like, it's okay, like even if you do have something below the fold, like cut it off, like ooh, build some entry, what is that? Yeah, definitely. And when you scroll down, you can see more of something else, more of something else. I think that's a good, uh, all right. Anel says the branding is beautiful. Perfect, thank you so much. Mm. Yeah, this is kind of just like a large call to action to explore more. Uh, and I would love for this to be like a, an image carousel, so that's why. Just little, I like this, a little. brand new fragrance every month. Yeah. Like, almost like a brand new you every month. Kind of, yeah. You know? Like, just like, cool, cool deal. So yeah, we have the challenge going on. Your, uh, we will highlight the challenge entries uh, in less than an hour, but we'll review those challenge entries in less than an hour. Find those in the challenge tab. And no, I agree. I love fragrance packaging as well. I would say it's like a lot of it is, you know, packaging. Really, yeah, I mean, it's what we do. This is basically a package for the whole brand, if you will. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. So right here, I want to add what it's kind of all about. I love this. This bottle here, yeah. Oh, look at look at look at how spacious and clean that is, right? Yeah. And that's kind of what this says. It's like clean. That black and white is kind of like sexy. You know, like sticking with what, you know, kind of that perfume brand is. I was open to your favorite UX and UI experiences. Maybe you don't like one page websites or, or landing pages. I don't know. Sorry? Maybe, maybe uh, in terms of UX and UI experiences, maybe people don't like a one page. I wanna, I wanna get everybody's like opinion on UX and UI. Sure. Or websites in particular. If there's good ones out there, maybe that you're real impressed with, we'd love to hear about those. I like what you're doing here. I love that the leading there, by the way. Yeah. You don't have a lot of copy, but what you have there is that like almost double spaced, right? Mm -hmm. That looks really good. Yeah. A glance at the product. Yeah, I think to answer Ryan Riley's question, he was asking about the grid in general. I can quickly copy paste this first page here, right? So this is kind of like the default grid, right? And um, what I like to do, I like to just build my own kind of grid layouts that I want to work with. And um, it's important that just the margins are the same everywhere, right? So. I start turning off all these parameters here first, and then I start working, um, start working with these ones here. So this is, could be like 20, 20, 20, 20, you know, just to see, and then and, and then just depending on your style or what you what you what you want to do, like working my way, working my way through um, the margins on each side to make sure that those are consistent. So I could give this 75, 75, 75, 75. Um, and then trying to add as many columns as I think is necessary for the product. Clubs that's a total of how many? Um, 19 in this 19. case, yeah. Where'd you learn to use grid systems? Um, there's a really, really good book on, uh, on grid systems. Uh, I'll try to figure out the name later and and showcase it. And I actually learned a lot from him as well. He's my uh, uh, ex-creative director. Who's that? Kleb Marlin from Watson Design Group. Oh, Kleb is how you say it. Yeah, Kleb. Okay. Yeah. Kleb, Kleb. I've been pronouncing it wrong. Yeah.
Uh, so, uh, just so you know, Ryan Riley says you're the man. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. In terms of sort of getting you started in XD, I'm also just kind of like checking out plugins because plugins are fairly new to XD. Definitely, yeah. Um, you know, they might help you get up to speed even faster. Um, there's an Unsplash plugin, so. Uh, Sweet. Yeah, we got some cool things. So, uh, <laughs> Chris, what's up? Oh, uh, yeah. Dan Barkley <laughs> knows. John Chichold. Jan Chichold. Mm. That was other, I think that's the guy who's the book from. Yeah. Okay. I'll look that up. Go on, I think images or just type in um, grid systems as well. Oh, I'm still on images. Oh, wow. There's one called the, the Secret Law. Is that right? There's a lot of really good ones. I'll figure out the name of the one that, of this particular book later. Yeah, uh, you got it. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, Ryan, I'm not bringing back the dad sweater. Don't worry. We got, but we do have you covered today. So not to worry. You are in good hands, my friend. I wore dad sweater yesterday. The grid system, is it just literally called that? I mean, yeah, either way, yeah, yeah. you could just you definitely Google it. There's enough out there on him that you can read. So, uh, yeah, so fascinating. So, I mean, the thing is, is like when you look at something, you want, you want things to be balanced. Oftentimes, you want something to like have weight. And the cool thing about this is this goes for page design, like any visual art, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even if you're doing a painting or an illustration, you know, it's all about like leading the eye, making sure something's kind of like balanced. And then it does need to have weight, which is exactly why I like, kind of like what you did here with this base right here. You're kind of like, you're giving it kind of like a little bit of ground plane. Yeah, definitely. You know, which just looks really good, you know? So it's also, it's just, you, you need some kind of like elements, right? To, to balance it out, to not make it too clean or too white. It can, it can kind of look too boring then as well. Yeah. Make sure it's not. And I love anytime you break the border, like breaking that line is awesome. Yeah, definitely. And you were doing that also at the top of the page with that image. Like I just, I think this is, a go, even go up even further right here, this little notch right there. Yeah. Like that's cut out. That seems like a design trick that you kind of have in your back pocket that you're like, yeah, I could totally do that. It's gonna look cool. Definitely, yeah. Because <laughs> it does look cool. <laughs> yeah. It works really well for depends on depends on what you're working with though, but it works it works really nicely here. Um, gonna add another line here. <laughs> hey Ryan Ford, what's up, man? Did give you a shout out earlier because I think his submission yesterday for the design challenge, I think he did a great job. So Ryan. You did a great job. He wants to know what he's missed. So let's just start up from the very beginning for sure. Ryan. No, yeah. just kidding, not really. <laughs> but the, you could scroll down the page. Yeah, I can just go through this page <laughs> for who, Ryan Ford, yeah. Yeah, buddy. So yeah. yeah, here it is, basically perfume subscription service. You sign up, you get perfume each, each month. You're selling it at this point, the beauty of box perfumes, like, this is gonna, this, this is gonna improve your love life. That's kind of what you want to say here. It's easy. It's gonna improve your love life and whatever else. That whole thing. So that's cool. This glance at the product, super cool. Yeah, this is supposed this could be like I think the idea here is to have this kind of like be interactive, right? This could you could drag and drop, you know, you pull you pull on this kind of element here. 
pull it all the way up here and kind of like these the bottle kind of like comes out. Will like animate out or something exactly, like yeah, that. Exactly. That's that's how it should. That's Very how it should. Cool. That's how it should look like in the end. That is awesome. or be too quiet, but basically I want to open up some examples of some things that we have. Just need to give you some, some examples of, of stuff for the design challenge. We have auto animate. So I feel like you should know how uh, that works. Just give me one second. Oh yeah. Quick example, uh, just so you know. Let's do this, just kind of show you real fast. This is just like auto animate, just so people know. Uh, these shapes, you know, as long as these shapes are named the same thing, this, this rectangle too on this next artboard right here, you know, we have rectangle tool is right there. So it goes from here to here, right? With that done, go to prototype, and then all we need to do is connect those two screens. And with those two screens connected, I'm gonna have it go automatically, so time's gonna be zero. So automatically uh, auto animate to the next screen over say 0.5 seconds as my duration, okay? But that's just an example of auto animate. And I'll click play. This has lots of things going on. Zoop, zoop. Juke, it's a really nice new juke, feature juke. from experience of that. You know? We made this on the stream yesterday morning. Nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> just for fun. But it's so fun to work with. It's just a blast. And I like this one had the plane because it's all about creating a, an airline uh, web page that has auto animate on it. Uh, but I was just showing you the basics of auto animate. Yeah. So. Just adding like little, little elements here. This Ooh. is the bottle. This is the scent vial. It's, a, it's this part here. Oh. And then oh. when you drag and drop, he's kind of like this stuff here would switch, you know? It would kind of like this would. Okay, you know like what I mean? highlight. Yeah, this would highlight this part then here, and this would have been, this would drop on. Um, Very cool. Yeah. Let's get on I love this. On this I want to sign up for this. I yeah. do. Especially because this is also great for travel. For, for take sure, one. yeah. Yeah. Perfect, small. Nice, light, easy. Right. So now I want to bring the website back into on the black background. I thought that was really nice earlier. And I'm yeah, basically going to copy this image again, add another one over here. Like this. Right. Nice. And that's, you just did that just to. Just so you have the correct size. Exactly, this way I have the correct size, and now I can just drag, drag and drop it. anything into here. Nice. Yeah. What is that? Are they filling it? What's happening? This is just like a mood mood piece, I guess, you know? It's just okay. like, it's supposed to look. Oh, it's a mirror. They're it's a mirror, a mirror, yeah, they're holding up a mirror, oh, okay. yeah. Exactly. Nice. Um, Fan and says, fantastic. Yeah, we want to know what you think. Uh, oh, 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 those are grouped, actually. That's why you're having oh. that line. Sorry. Oh, you're good. I'll ungroup this whole thing. Uh, yeah, so just you could still copy it. And maybe you want to make that a, a symbol yourself. You're actually inside of it now. This, uh, yeah. What are you trying to do? Just copy the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah, just click on the black and then copy, paste, and then drag. Perfect. There you go. I think you just click. Sometimes you, you can click, click a little bit too deep. A good way to just kind of see where you're at in those cases is to use the um, layers panel. We'll just give you a good idea of like how things are grouped together, mm -hmm. just to be mindful of where you're at. Yeah, definitely. Ooh, Onur, that's a good question and a, a nice a nice thought to think about is parallax or any sort of scrolling animation would be kind of interesting to think about. I think, I guess, I guess it's it would be definitely a second step, you know, to think about what kind of animations. Um, 
animations we, we want to do here. But I think this whole like principle of scrolling down a page and everything's just kind of like, you know, kind of like jumping into the page, you know, like transitioning in. I think okay. that's, that's really... That would be good, yeah. I, w I don't know if I want to see them slide up and down, because then it just seems too chaotic. No, m m probably not, no. Yeah. yeah, you're good. Especially if you're already using, um, you know, kind of offset layout for the grid. You yeah, know? That's it's the offset layout would make it seem more just, just like just disjointed, I think. Yeah. Michael Crabtree, do you like it? Let us know if you like it. Yeah, at least like where it's heading. Uh, again, I love how you have that kind of overlapping the photo there. It's, yeah. It's really cool. And that just says explore. Exactly, yeah. It'll That's good. It'll link you to the to a page with more information just in general about the product. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer wishes there was a find and replace for images. Yeah, that would be nice. But you could also just like make it, if it's a symbol, then you could update it easier later on. Um, Show a couple things. Started to get into uh, into plugins. Yeah, go for it. Which is kind of nice. Kind of checking that out. But so here's my sweet landing page. Oh yeah, it's so sweet. Look at that. It's such a good job. Beautiful. You know? <laughs> You gotta, you gotta start somewhere, and I want some body copy right here. Click, drag. This is where I'd put in my body copy, sure, right? But I really want to use Lorem Ipsum, which I already have installed, quite frankly. So, uh, plugins, Lorem Ipsum, fill with placeholder text, so no text is selected. That's why I drew out that box right in here. There we go. Placeholder text, you get the idea, insert it, there we are. And then I would do something I've learned from you is like really give this a lot of space. What's, what size font are you using for your body copy? Um, in this case, 26. 26. Yeah. Okay, yeah, actually my, I started with a, a different like mobile view. So ah, okay, yeah. Mine's kind of wacky. Um, but nonetheless, just I really like that double spacing. So, you know, 48 or something like that. Oh, sorry. You know, this already makes it look much more elegant. Uh, if I want to grab some images, what I can do as well is uh, plugins. There's uh, like Photo Splash is another one just for grabbing images. So all this says is just to search. So we'll do planes or plane. and grabbing, say for instance, this one. Stretching that out mm -hmm. or doing something with it. So anyways, just some shortcuts to get you up and running. I'm trying to give you some tips for the challenge today. It's also just beautiful to see how, how lightweight, you know, the whole, the whole product kind of is. It's all, I guess, vector-based, right? So it's just very easy to copy-paste certain artboards if you want to, you know, if you're a, something I always like to do, and it's hard to do it in Photoshop, and I've seen how easy it is now to um, to do an ex in, you know, experience design, is if you're just, you want to copy, you want to copy a certain, you know, a certain page, mm -hmm. and you just want to see, okay, what if we, you know, what if we, what if we want to switch this image around, put it on this side, you know, let's mm -hmm. keep, keep this text here, you know, maybe maybe this looks better, what if, you know, is, is the spacing here fine, do we need to, do we need to change any of this? All this kind of stuff works really, really easy in, in, in experience design. It's, it's, 
it's really easy. Yeah. Really easy to, to yeah, do. Yeah, and all you did is like you you just duplicated a page and then just started experimenting. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. You you work on your page until you're happy, and then you feel like okay, maybe maybe this maybe this would be better if it was you know aligned perfectly. You know. Oh yeah. And then you could go you could go here. And oh, maybe it looks better like this. Maybe I want to move it all the way to the side, and then you go back to the original one you're working on, and you see, oh no, you know what? I actually like it better this way, or it makes more sense. Yeah, no, I like that. Yeah, it's kind of. Okay, that's that looks that's really really good. I didn't get the speed is treated as a sort of a, a feature, quite frankly. Like we're, we got to keep speed up because we can't have this slow down. So they treat speed as a, is definitely like a feature uh, that they work on. Hey, Claude, good to have you here, buddy. Yeah, the this page is really sexy, and that's what you're going for. Definitely, like, yeah. Sex, sexy page. Yeah, it's gonna make you feel like a million bucks. For sure. Uh, you sign up. So, but on that note, I just kind of switch over. Like here's here's one where like here's one, basically one page. You kind of see what that looks like, and then iterate on that page because again, performance is like a first-rate feature, right? Yeah. And then iterate on that page, maybe for this one. Exactly. And then iterate on that one. Yeah. And then iterate on that one. <laughs> oh. And that one. And that one. Oh. And there's 1,500 here. Which is impressive. That's insane. And look at how fast it's going. Yeah, you could never do that uh, with artboards, artboards on Photoshop. Provided a lot of this is duplicated, but it, it's all still there. Those yeah. images are still being like duplicated, but like I could do this all day long, right? This it's is mesmerizing, so nice. right? And I love if I'm working on something, uh, Command 3, boom, jump right uh, to it. Nice. Command 0, zoom, zoom out. Back, zoom back out, cool. So some of these shortcuts are awfully nice when working. <laughs> Oh, you're down to like the footer. Exactly. Yeah, I'm going. I'm, I have the logo and some social media icons, and I, I kind of like in the footer. I used to like replicate some of the stuff we're doing in the menu. You know, like if there's an overlay mm -hmm. menu with some important aspects, I want to be able. I want people to be able to scroll down on the page, yeah. and then they could like you know they can subs subscribe or look for contact or find different pages, you know, FAQs yeah, about that's us. Yeah, that's true. Something that's just, it, it's it's a good anchor point for yeah. users to kind of like figure out, you know, what I'm, what I'm actually looking for, what I, what I want from this yeah. kind of page. That's such a great point because like m maybe you can't find it in the page or whatever. Yeah. But I know in the food footer that's like, this is like every page for this like website, I feel. Exactly. I should be able to find it here. Definitely, yeah. You know. Yeah. No, we're gonna yeah, that. sorry that file is not available for a download, Raphael. Um, the boosted one isn't. I'd give it to you, but I really don't have the rights to. It's not. It's not my my, my file. But but there are some really beautiful um, UI kits you can download for XD, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, there's oh, some really cool insane. ones out there In right fact, now. In fact, I think there is. Hold on. UI kits, Sky Travel, yes. There's a Sky Travel UI kit. You know, but the thing is, like, we know about these UI kits. So if you go, feel free to use them. But somebody who created something like that's original is obviously my edge out. Somebody who just used something from UI kit. But at the same time, like, this look how gorgeous this one is, by the way. Yeah. Like, this is Sarah. And it's Sarah it's not Brandes. necessarily, you know, you can just use it as like inspiration or think about. You know, just learn about fonts and styles and how to lay out yeah. different aspects. And you know, you're looking She's at this. She's doing and, what you're doing. Too. Exactly. Yeah. Same yeah. thing. You know, and you look at this and you're like, oh, I really like the way that that font sits in the in the call to action button. Yeah. You know, you don't have to you don't have to steal it or copy it, but you can just kind of yeah. get inspired by kinda it. Kind of pick it apart. Like the spacing is at like a hundred. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Looks so good. That's a huge tip for buttons, like right here. It's just the space out the letters, have lots of um, kerning between those letters, and then it just really makes it, kind of sets it apart, but yeah. Picking apart my... Thank you, Voodoo Val. Posted a link for the XD resources, you have UI kits, you have uh, basically plugins as well. Yes, Raphael, good call. UI kits, good to sort of reverse engineer them. 
But again, it's just exactly. the final file. We don't get to see somebody work like you're doing now. And I, I like to kind of see how this is coming together and how you're making like some of these like, you know, decisions that you're really doing probably like intuitively. A lot of it is uh, intuitively, yeah, definitely. We were talking about this last night because I always said that like art school, like I already knew how to do, like I already kind of felt like I knew how to design, but yeah. it gave me a reason. It's like, oh, this is why you intuitively do this. Exactly. So it gave me a, sort of an explanation, which helped me explain to clients, that this is why I did this. Sure, for, for sure, yeah. Right. Um, and there's so much you can you can learn about just, even if you're just looking at typography and at font sizes, you know, there's a reason why these sizes work great together. There's, and there's mm -hmm. really, really good um, materials online. You, you can read up on that stuff. Does this font have different uh, weights to it? Yeah, for sure. Is, okay, because that's how I also like to pick a font, is if it has a lot, has a lot of versatility in terms of weight. Yeah, you can look here. It has regular light, medium, semi-bold, bold, bold, nice. black, italic. And I like how you're doing that. Like, you don't necessarily have to make it bold, because what you're also doing is, I like this. Like semi-transparency looks really good. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's a good way to it's a good way to. Kind you're still staying staying in the same font style. Yeah, it's still a regular font, but you kind of or in this case light, but on a mouse over this could just become white again. You know, mm -hmm. and that's kind of how you're working with it. We'll, we'll get more into that in a second. Ryan Riley, just so you know, you can always go under File. If you're using XD, go to File, Get UI Kits. That's right here. Super easy. And also, there's other helps and tutorials in here as well. And you can also see what's new. So there's a lot happening on a regular basis with XD. Less than 30 minutes for the challenge deadline. Oh yeah, I'm excited for that. I want to see Get what people come up rocking. with. I like that you're, you know, you you judge for like FWA and other other places. So it's it's going to be nice, kind of hearing from you and seeing what you think of what gets submitted. Yeah. Um, uh, how do you make text bigger on the keyboard? Yeah, good question. Ooh, yeah. You can use the arrow keys. If you're in any field, you can use the arrow keys to resize the text. As long as you highlight that, and if you do a shift up arrow, you can see I'm going from ten, you know. Uh, 18, 28, 38, just like that. Yeah. Or I can say, hey, you know what, I want this. This is this is what I'll sometimes do. It's like, you know, if I'll have a I'll have a, a square. Let me just show you one other thing. I think this is like really, really cool. Like maybe this is covering the page. And I only really want it to be like a third of the size. So I can do the width of this whole thing divided by three. So you can do math operations. Uh, in XD as well. That's pretty cool. And yeah, now it's one third the size, um, which is awesome. So, don't forget about that. You do that with any of those fields. Can we mirror an image in XD? Uh, not right now. Yeah, but I think that's a great. I got to double check because every time I say not right now, I always need to just double check. Yeah, because <laughs> somebody hasn't true. added that feature already. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, you currently, I think that's a feature that does uh, need to happen, for sure. Being able to sort of just flip an image. For right? sure. You can, you can, you know, yeah, it just doesn't quite work the same if you grab that edge. Right, just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. Like I can grab this, and maybe this does have a gradient, by the way, just so we can see what it looks like. Here's the gradient. I grab it and flip it the gradient stays the same. So it's actually not a mirror, even though I'm flipping it, right? And especially with this, even though it's a grouped shape, if I want to like flip it, again, my original t uh, my tendency is to grab that and go to the other side, but it kind of breaks apart. So yes, I will check to see where that's at under on user voice.
All right, I need to hit up Hoyle. <laughs> Hoyle Wang, actually. So this is what I love about user voice, right? So uh, I just got into this. Under the help menu, if you select provide feedback, you'll go out to what's called user voice and you can see what's being worked on real fast. Just let me just point this out. I know like that it says that this feature started, Hoyle's working on it, Hoyle Wang actually responded, but that easily falls under uh, you know his, his area of expertise as the product manager for that area. Um, and the next step is me, for me to just like hit him up and be like, hey dude, where's that at? And can I leak it to the public? Yes. <laughs> Angeles, good to have you here from Argentina. Welcome. This is looking really good, man. Yeah. So this is kind of like my menu layover, You're right? Um, okay. Oh yeah, you click on the little ha hamburger. Click on the little hamburger icon here. Turns into this X. You have all of these points, and if you kind of like mouse over one of these categories here. You know, you get an image. Ooh. You know what I mean? It, it kind of looks like this. <coughs> Excuse me. No worries. This is something cool we can prototype later. You know. Yeah. And, and hovers are interesting because, of course, those only going to work like in the in the browser on on. Oh yeah, for sure. Like mouse overs only work on the browser, but it's it's a good way sometimes to just um, give the whole page just an interesting like edge to it, you know? Just something more yeah. that, that users kind of like- A little bit get of intrigued life. Of. Yeah. yeah. It, it makes me want to click on it. I see it move, I'm like, oh, let's, I would, you know. And it's kind, of a, it's kind of rewarding as well. If you're on a web page and everything that you click on or you mouse over, something happens, mm -hmm. that's kind of like, it gives the user a reason to be on the, on the page, you know, and mm -hmm. to interact with, with, with different elements on the page. So it doesn't get boring for them. Yeah. Cool, I need to... Oh, thanks, Anita. Today's full of professionals that are working away. We, we lock the studio door, we're like, you're not done until you turn all these sketches into a suite. Into a suite design. Yeah, yeah, suite designs. <laughs> <laughs> and we get to see it happen live, so. Oh, Noor wants the template. Like, whoa, hold on there, buddy. We're not even done with this yet. We literally just started like an hour ago. And you're yeah. making like great progress, by the way. Thank you. You're moving, you're moving pretty quickly and you're making me feel lazy. No, no, <laughs> you're, you're going good. so you're fast. <laughs> great images, right. like really great font, great images. You know, it's like, it's it's almost like yours to break. Just let these images shine, let the product shine. Yeah. And obviously pick a font that complements it as well. This is also really nice. Very cool. About 20 minutes to get your challenge submission in. And uh, we'd love to see what you're working on. You usually like for your projects. Um, yeah. I mean, are you usually designing like English-based, sort of like working with English text? Um, I mean, it, it really depends. It, it really depends, but I guess because some of this would be like a whole other story if it was in German, huh? I actually started some of this in German first. Oh, really? Yeah, just huh. just to just to, it, just it would to totally work because you have enough space I feel like to accommodate definitely like, definitely yeah. German words which they're like we are gonna use them all <laughs> yeah we're gonna use all the letters in the alphabet for these words <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> I think it gets really difficult once you like if you had to do this in like Chinese you know or if it's a oh, corporate man. website a huge website that has to work in six or si seven different languages you know yep. then it kind of starts getting really tricky. There is actually, there's, I'm pretty sure there is a plugin for XD to allow you to, let me check on it. There might be like a, 
language plugin. So many, and this is like brand new. I absolutely like really am digging plugins for sure. Yeah, you there's know. some really good ones out there, right? Yeah, and they, there's, you know, there's this one that just like pseudo -localiz localization that just like just popped up today, right? So it's a pseudo language localization based on your copy. So. Uh, either way, like this stuff just kind of pops up, and my job is to find out uh, language. That's what I'm searching on, but we'll see. I'll I'll will see what I can get a hold of. The voice animation is also really cool, right? Yeah, yeah, it that's is. a really really nice feature. Eric's working on a website that requires seven to nine languages on a daily basis. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, you gotta. Do you plan on working on a mobile mock-up as well, or no? We'll see. I mean, you're just trying to get one done. <laughs> I'm trying to get one done, yeah. I mean, we can we can theoretically tomorrow, so we can do it with just one page to see how you just go from a from you know from a larger screen onto onto the mobile and, mm -hmm. and work with the responsive um, elements. But I think I think we can we can definitely go go for one of those, yeah. But not all of it. It would probably take too long. So this is this this is where something like that would come into play. Like, you might have uh, sort of like a Google Sheet, for instance. Yeah. Google, using Google Sheets, you have different columns for the different languages, and there's actually a plugin to use Google Sheets and to bring that into XD. Um, so public link CSV file, you get it. Um, the refresh tool allows designers to easily update designs with updates in the Google Sheet. So literally, just hit like a refresh. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's pretty cool. Just being able to bring in that content is nice. So. Yeah, and with this plugin, it, it makes it really easy, and then you can like you know see and tweak it and see if you need more space or how to how do you know, build your borders so it makes sense in each in all of the different languages you want to use. Right on the page. Yeah. So right now I'm just going to build up like the pricing um, page for this app where you can uh, for this website where you can kind of see what kind of subscription steps there are. They they have like three months, six months, and twelve months. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to start laying that out. But first, I'm going to add my colors here. These are colors I chose based off of the campaign we shot. And um, you can go into your assets sheet here and just kind of like add them all in. You can select them all and click plus. Perfect. You could nice. select everything on that page. And click plus, and, right? And uh, yeah, actually, technically, you'd have to click plus for each one, but yeah, you can add them all yeah. pretty easily. Which is good. It's nice that you have this laid out. Yeah, know? it's always just like your go-to spot if you need something else, you know? And um, I did the same with the whole footer. I just laid it out first in black and white because I knew I'd, I'd probably need it inverted at some point. And then you can just always copy-paste it and add it to your... You know, to your and I site. like I like the sort of the highlighting so you can see you you can you can like check over here if you right click all these various options so highlight on canvas right or rename but you can like uh, actually yeah. see if it's like where it's being used definitely yeah and kind of make sure it's h1 is being applied everywhere you need it to yeah kind of cool. and then if you edit one of these character styles it changes it all over yeah. your, your artboard yeah that's really cool as well same thing saves for, you a lot of time I guess yeah same same for colors as well. I mean, you, you yeah. those are pretty solid, so I don't need to sweat that. But and I like how you can put gradients in those different swatches, because you cannot do that. A gradient can't be a global color in Illustrator, and it needs to be. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> I'm 
just hanging out, listening. There's background music playing on really? the stream. But no. you don't hear the music playing in the room? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you do, you can like nod your head, like you're well, like we hear. Oh yeah, like hear the music. Like I'm, oh, like I'm grooving good, along to it. This is a good beat. DJ, DJ Pac-Man on the ones and twos to the left of us. Just working it. Actually, nobody uses ones and twos anymore. He's on his laptop mixing tracks. Nice. <laughs> He's our resident DJ, comes in every day. <laughs> DJ Pac-Man, mixing it up for us. Fresh beats daily. Perfect, <laughs> that's what you need, right? Yeah. So you could do, I know Chris mentioned how like the, he's struggling with the iTunes little icon bouncing up and down, which is really annoying. Um, you know, but also reminds me that since you are dealing with auto animate, check out some of the easing properties. There should be ease in, ease out, there's bounce. Uh, I gotta look at the rest. <laughs> but there, bounce is actually one of the animate features. So there's like a rubber band style one. So I'm loving these letters, or excuse me, these numbers. Yeah, it's nice, right? Yeah. Really not a really nice large again like you said earlier. Yeah. Look at that. Huh. Yeah, it's very beautiful. Still have to persuade the client to purchase the fund. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but hey man, good stuff costs money. Like you can't just get something for free. I mean, come on. Definitely, Somebody yeah. spent a lot of time on this, you know? You know this I exactly. feel the same way about images and stuff. Doing you know, like, don't steal images. No, like, no, no, for sure. Don't do it, because somebody worked hard for those. Like, don't try to freaking take out the watermark or repost things that are not yours, you yeah. know? And I think today, yeah, people think they can do that, and it's wrong. Yes, Onora agrees, says font selection. Font selection here really is, this is like half of the job, like, part of your job, he says half, 50% of his job. Selecting it's the right fonts, right? It's part, yeah. Definitely, of course. It can really make or break the whole, the whole design in general, mm -hmm. right? And I feel like you're lucky enough that this font looks good as title as well as like body copy. Exactly. A lot of times it's like, you're kind of struck, or you're, you're trying to see two that, or a couple of them that work well together. Yeah, yeah. You know, your headline, and, and that's why it's good to like work with type foundries or find type foundries that kind of build fonts that have a lot of like, they, they can work in a lot of different ways, right? They have a lot of styles, they have a lot of different um, mm -hmm. spacing options. And then they, you know, they add them to a book like this one here yeah. where you can just like get inspired and see, oh, this font works really great as a bold, you know? But it also works nice if I'm just using the numbers here, mm -hmm. or if I'm spacing it out like I'm doing here for the call to action. Yeah, what's and then, the name of this font again? Chap. Chap. Chap, yeah. And then it kind of like cohesively works nice if you if you put it all together because it's all the same family stuff, yeah. you know? Totally. And that's something really, really important. So Chap is not part of uh, Typekit? No, unfortunately not. That's right, but you can jump out to uh, Adobe Fonts, so fonts.adobe.com, because you can sync as many as you want now, which is like treble. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> it is cool. It used to only be 100, and now you can sync like all the fonts. You can sync all 15, however many. I really? Hear, they said 15,000 at max. Uh, So, either way, that does make life a lot easier. Cool, some fun news about Typekit. Yeah, that's announced. Thank you so much, Lee. Thank you, Lee, that's too kind of you. What are you doing? What are you doing upstairs? She works for Adobe and she's probably upstairs. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Come on downstairs, <laughs> let us know. Uh, I do really like with that many fonts, the next step is like, again, finding the right one, even as we move forward, finding the right fonts, finding the right photos, like how do you do that? It's gonna be more about the finding process than anything. Yeah. Right, I got oh, so many things I wanna. I think, you know, again, Adobe Fonts is amazing. 
Uh, also stock. And that's how you easy. can't like you can't jump this kind of like creative process, right? You need time. Uh, you, the designer needs to be able to get the time from the client to make a cool mood board, create kind of like his own style kit, and figure out how he needs and wants to work with all of this stuff. Because I mean, I'm jumping into screen design here, but basically there's always a lot of like tweaking and kind of like, it's just a very iterative process, you know, to actually, until this kind of like spacing feels right and until you wanna, until you feel okay with it, right? Yeah. And it's, Did you add this, is that all in the same, did you adjust the the baseline mm -mm. on 165? The font, do, the font does it on its own. Does like. it, is it recognizing that the one is next to a six? I think so, yeah, I think that's how that works. Okay, because that's just, that's gorgeous. Yeah, look at this. So feel free, for the challenge, you can use like watermarked images and everything as well. Um, I kind of want to show you something. Go for it. This is amazing. You might not know about this. This is so fun. Um, Lee's creeping. Lee knows about this. Chris, you, everybody needs to know about this. So again, speaking of sort of like what we call like Adobe Sensei, which is just the magic that's running under the hood. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have an image, and maybe I want to use something kind of like this image. I can search based on that image, which you know, you could do that in Google Images. Yeah. I get it. There's so much more you can do. Like right now I'm searching on all attributes, right? Which is cool. Or I can say, hey, you know what? Just give me content, give me different people. Ah. You know, or like pictures of two people together, for instance. Nice. And give yeah. me those different colored versions. Or just, you know what, give me something with that same color palette. So if you can imagine, I'm making a layout. This is my main, my hero image, but I need other images that will match that same tone. I'll just go with color, mm -hmm. right? Cool, and then it yeah. will pull in different images that might work. And again, you can see it's the same sort of color palette. It's really important, you know? That's very, especially right? when you're working uh, on a website like this, all of these images, I treated them beforehand, but if you don't do that, it. It feels off, you know. Yeah, you yeah, can't just but, mix so many images together, which have different lighting or different just temperature of the of the of the colors. You know, like it's, yeah, it gets too exactly. It gets too unorganized, unstructured, kind of. Oh, by the way, I'll do this. I'll do one more over here. Images with copy space. Ooh, Isn't nice. This nice too. That's perfect. Okay. Yeah. And again, same, whether this is whatever. Again, I'm just doing based on color, but these have copy space, so they're just more spacious. But you are right, I think that's like, that is our job, is to take all these photos and make it look like it came from the same camera at the same time or whatever. You know? Definitely, yeah. Um, that's why it's good to, you know, to work with a, either to, to when you're choosing your stock photography to really make sure you know, you know what you're what, what you're doing, and having kind of like these options you were just showing really help. Yeah. Or when you're actually able to just you know create a whole campaign yourself with a photographer or something, mm -hmm. you need somebody there who who's constantly thinking about lighting and making sure that everything that you're shooting or creating new mm -hmm. is always shot in the same style, right? Yeah, that's really important. Yeah, that is that is huge, and know where it's being used because you're yeah. lucky yeah. enough that these are kind of spacious images. Yeah, so you can put some text, you know, in spots. Exactly, but I also made sure that they were shot that way. You know, yeah, that's yeah. Like you said, you have to know that. Uh, you know, the photographer might say, "Oh, this is, I like this, but." This area here is way too blurry, and then as a designer, you can go, no, it's it's actually fine because, like you just said, this space mm -hmm. here, I might actually need it. You know, I yeah. might actually add some copy to this and make this the intro page or the header image. You know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and then for, like that's also the reason I chose the stroke font here. It, there's so much going on on this image, you mm -hmm. know, that it wouldn't it wouldn't work if I just like added. See, if I just add a text on top of it, yeah, it, it, it's too unorganized, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't work well, but then you... In fact, I think this is stronger with the welcome over it. Like even... Definitely, yeah. Even with just that image, I don't think the image is that great, because it's almost like too... Th but this kind of like, I don't know, maybe pushes it, it just helps out the whole image. Yeah, for sure. It yeah. just kind of ties it all together or something. And that's what fonts sometimes can do really well, you know? They just tie everything together and give it like an overall branding, you know, that's mm -hmm. that's that's kind of what you're doing here as well. That's also what the style guide is, right? These are just brand guidelines for the web. Mm -hmm. uh, every yeah. company who works on corporate design and branding does this anyway, you know, to just create just create rules that, that you live by when you're creating anything and you try to stick to this. And that's how you kind of build up consistency and make the website flow really nice and never have the user like confused. It's really important. Yeah, no, that is good. 
We we actually snuck a feature. I think it was uh, I th it was during Adobe Max sneaks where we sneak new technology. Yeah. In terms of like, because our job is to really <clears throat> make this harmonious and all make all back going back to like making photos match. Yeah. That's what this this little this program did. Nice. It, took, yeah. it made all the photos the same tone. Because reds, one might be more magenta, another one's like more orange. Sure, and yeah. And it just tied them all together with like one click. That's really good. I thought that was like really cool. Yeah. Like I want to use that. Like <laughs> I want that. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. Um, also, another reason why I love using grids and working with these different columns is, for instance, if you, it just it kind of once you get used to working with grids, it really just like answers questions for you. You know, you might be asking yourself, how much space should I have between these arrows, right? And then you can mm -hmm. see, oh, maybe if I'm if I'm if I'm going off one column here, it's it's it, it could be it's not it's, there's not not enough spacing here, right? But then mm -hmm. you just go, okay, I'm not gonna just randomly put it here, right? I'm gonna stick to the guidelines I set at the mm -hmm. beginning of my yeah. of my of my job here, and that that's what I mean when I say like answering questions for you. You know, it's this font wouldn't just be anywhere. It needs to be you know it needs to be aligned to the grid where the same thing here is aligned as well, the same typography up here. Um, yeah. And you start designing faster that way as well. You just start working working faster and it's easier for everybody. Yeah, in, into it. Yeah. It does help answers answers questions for you. Using yeah. grid. So I'm just talking about Zeblin here as well in the chat. It's a really nice, nice software okay. to Yeah. You can drag and drag and drop your um, your screen design into it. It's really cool for developers. They have, they have all the margins and spacing, all the assets already picked up for them. It's really cool. Yeah, um, Zeppelin is a plugin for XD as well. Yeah, it was one yeah, of our no. first ones, which as you probably know yeah. about. Yeah, really good, really beautiful. It's just software makes it makes your work so much easier, you know. Yeah. Nice. Hmm, I'll choose another image here. I think I'll go with this one. Down to the last two minutes for the challenge and not to worry. We don't get to yours during this segment. We will review them in our next segment. Tomorrow, right? Uh, well, uh, for um, uh, Olga, who's up next, ah, okay. she'll, she'll have a chance to like review some of the entries. Cool. Yeah. And so will Melody. We have a full day today. We're just designing a, currently designing a perfume subscription service. You get a perfume a month, which is fantastic. It's a landing page is what we're creating. With the one and only Marvin Schweibold. You can check out his, like, seriously, check out your beha his Behance. Your Behance is awesome. Like, Thank you so, so much, yeah. So jealous. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool, it really is, so. But we have a full day, so hang out with us all day long. I have, uh, Ryan, I have not used the Yokato plugin for Adobe XD. Don't know how it works. Maybe somebody here in chat does. And if they haven't, hey man, be the first and report back to us. Because <laughs> we would love to hear uh, more about it. I don't even know what Yokato means. Very cool. I just tried out another plugin, by the way. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah, go for it, sure. Like, again, this could be anything. So, uh, here's a lot that I'm, I don't have time to. Ooh, world ready. I'm gonna see which that one is. The UI faces, I showed a photo splash, but what if you need something specific, like just pictures of people, basically? Yeah. Like, you have, we need, like, users, for instance. I can use UI faces, use, you know, unsplash, age 18 to. 30, male, happy, well, let's go, female. Um, or you can even randomize, but basically that's all you need to do is apply face. 
Oh, or not. I have too many filters on it. There you go. Nice. Um, I could actually have selected multiple objects and it would have filled them all with people, which would have been also a cool demo. Definitely a time saver, right? Yeah. Because again, you're just like, you're, you could be just creating some sort of like some wireframe or something. You just need to drop in some content. Really Especially fast. if you're just like, you know, at the beginning of a product, project where you're just like trying to, you're trying to work fast and you're trying to get a lot of different versions done and a lot of iteration, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's like really important. Um, yeah, and then all these plugins are really helpful, and just the lightweightness of XD in general is just really, 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 really good. Hey, you know what, man? You're uh, you're bumming Natalia out. Quit bumming her out. She says she comes to when she looks at your work, it's beautiful. When she goes back to hers, she's like, Oh no, don't say uh. that. <laughs> <laughs> Why you gotta bum her out, man? I'm sorry. Why have to be so good? No, you are. It's it's really strong. So these are the different price plans, right? Mm -hmm. so cool. They have and like the one in the middle, obviously, like this is the the one you want them to pick. Exactly, right? It's a, like a little bit more, you know, spaced out, has a different Which color. Which is, I don't think we do enough of this. Because when you're given a bunch of like options, sure there's like uh, this option, like fatigue, yeah. or whatever they call it, right? But like, just tell me which one you think is like the best. Definitely, yeah, and yeah. Um, yeah, or you know where you, which one is the most favorite that other people are using as well, you know? Yeah. Or uh, we, yeah, definitely that's what we're going for here. And then depending on which one you click, uh, we'll go through this on auto animate tomorrow. But this kind of the page will open and it'll kind of like s send you to like the you know to like the custom information pay pay kind of screens. Okay. Or basically, you know you you still have your deal on the left side, so you kind of know. What you're in for, mm -hmm. and then on the right it goes through like you know your custom information, your first name, last name, yeah. email address, company, postal code, city, uh, shipping and billing address, your call to action to, to click yeah. next. Yeah, and I'd almost still want maybe I'm overdoing it, but like this is like do you have a picture of some perfume or some sort of like sales image? Like this is why you're paying this. Yeah, like, we, could... we know we know we get it. You're faced with all these fields you got to enter. Yeah, this is what. This is what. Let's remind you. This yeah. is what you're getting. I have I, I have some ideas how to do that on the login screen, but if I look at my my screens here, I, I didn't think of that. But th theoretically, for just like, you know, for just going. I like it though. If like, we're going again. for it though, we could we could theoretically say, hey, why don't we add like maybe a carousel or something here, you know, and that it just while you're filling this stuff out, this page here could randomly change from the deal mm -hmm. to just like images, you know. Yeah. Or we could even try. We could even try to. I like that. Add an image and change the font color. Maybe we could. Maybe we could go with that. You're impressing Eric, by the way, too. He's cool. Impressive. Thanks, man. This is looking really good. Good use of colors. Like I know this palette was chosen like in advance. Yeah. Like all the stuff that kind of is done beforehand is kind of makes your job easy. Definitely, yeah. But in theory, if I'm just these are just like some random screams from from the mm -hmm. photo shoot, right? And if I'm kind of going through all of these images and kind of trying to figure out, yeah, you know, trying to figure out. I like the idea of these rotating images start to say, hey, this is a lot of stuff that I'm getting. Yeah. You know, even if it's just basically just different shots of uh, these perfume models. Sure, yeah. But then what I like doing is I look at all of these images and then I try to figure out what are That's like, cool. what are certain color tones that all of these images have in common, mm -hmm. you know, and that's how I that's how I basically then come up with um, these colors right here, and then I try to like sp space them out and use them all over the website, you know, for different for different for different mm -hmm. things. And yeah, that is cool. Yeah, that is the challenge submission deadline as well as you all saw. So we have a couple entries. Okay, sweet. We could do two versions of this, and then we see. What the live stream says and what people oh. think looks better, right? Yeah. You could look up. Because people sure buy products, but it's always interesting that you buy products based on how you think they're gonna make you like feel. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Look so at that's look, why. Look at even this. You know, even just adding this image here. Yeah. That's right. That's what I you know. were talking about, yeah. right? 
we still have we still have the, exactly the same information, mm -hmm. but we're adding an image to remind the user of what he's in for, just to mm -hmm. maybe you know you know like just emotionally trigger him a little bit and see oh yeah, yeah this is it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful product I, I really want to get this as well, and that was a really good call actually wow, this good. looks really nice thanks man adding adding value trying yeah. trying to help <laughs> of course just trying to help since I'm yeah. everybody can't be a Cool DJ mixing tunes all day long, fresh beats from like <laughs> DJ Pac Man. Nice. Be a, be a Gus Bot 5000, maybe 6000 today. I don't know. I think it's going to be Gus Bot 6000. That's the next, I guess, is going to be uh, the host. Yeah. Host stream. Okay. And he's also been the one helping us uh, get the uh, challenge submissions underway as well. So we'll review those. If you have some more work to do or whatever, like we can we can kind of dive into these. I think we probably should. These two entries. Yeah, Ooh, go for shoot, it. Shoot, I gotta download this. Wait, no, this is just a video. We could just play this. Maybe. Just give me one second. Big thanks to uh, Rick and uh, Than, T H A N H, Than Tam. And Rick, fantastic. Looks like these are both videos. I'm going to download them. Of course they are, because Adobe Anime actually doesn't work in the browser currently. So record a video for us. Uh, Than, yeah, we, we, we have yours, not to worry. Uh, Yeah, you're good. Good question by Nick here, Fristera. Why are the form fields so transparent? Um, I think what I was going for here was the user needs to see, you know, how many forms he has to fill out, but only when he actually starts, you know, clicking on the form, it actually uh, gets full transparency and has the full has the full like color once you start like adding your email address or something in here and the the same way you 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 choose the like rules for your style guide this is also like a rule i was using here you know in my in my menu overlay you know these aren't these are on 26% opacity but once you mouse over them you know you kind of like mm -hmm. get get feedback from the website so that's the same thing i'm kind of doing here you know they're all there, you can see them, but then theoretically, you know, once you start filling filling them out. Keyboard. Oh, are you having a hard time spelling yeah. your name? No, it's just my, <laughs> my, shift. my shift. Oh, shoot. Yeah. I got it now. There we go. All right. You kind of, kind of look like this then, you know? Oh, nice. Yeah, you already see what you filled out, and it's kind of a nice way to yeah. like, yeah, get at all, a get glance the, you can see exactly. You know what you what you still have to do because it's always is worse than missing a field. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, I think we've kept Rick waiting long enough. He's hung on and great, great little profile image. Look at that. Nice it's sort of uh, toned image. Oh yeah, let's look at this, uh, this for is a second. Rick's work, Rick Boson broke. And this is all about an airline website. They're using auto animate, so we should see some transitions. I showed the example earlier. But this is all in the uh, challenge tab. So we'll click. Ooh, Zoom. I like this, yeah. Click. Slider, look at that. Yeah, That's nice. nice. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, yeah. Again. So click on the next one. This is the transition or scroll, like a scroll down. Yeah. Okay. I like how the image kind of like, you know, zooms out and you're in the clouds actually. It's mm -hmm. kind of a nice, kind of nice Yeah, thing I was kind of surprised and into it. And I love this layout. Definitely like, beautiful layout, yeah. Hopefully Definitely. that blue is coming in because it looks like really nice. Yeah. So. All right, fantastic. You did. Nice fun as well. Beautiful. Yeah, right. Great job, Rick. This is Than Tams. Than, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Hopefully I am, but let's check this out right in here. 
Welcome to Luden Airline. There we go. There, there we go. it is. Zoop. Woo. Whoa. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> A lot of stuff <laughs> happening here, happening. right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's try that again. So right down here, I can imagine maybe you're scrolling and it comes into place. Oh, I yeah. love this. There's a little bit of bouncy. It almost gets a little herky-jerky, but man, that's just being nitpicky. Yeah. This is awesome. Like, I love how this is all coming into play. This coming straight out at you, that's exactly what I was expecting, so it's perfect. And then this has a, it's not a bounce. I can't think of that transition, but basically it's like a rubber band effect I'll have to take a look at. So it's kind of does an overshoot. Zoop. Almost. Yeah. See that bounce? Yeah. Good work. Fantastic. Two entries. Thank you, Than. Thank you, Rick. Two amazing entries for our challenge today. And honestly, you have to admit, this had to have been a lot of fun, right? Straight up, just fun. Uh, to answer your question, Chris, yes, this is all Adobe XD, right? You can see easily if I jump into XD, it's just a matter of having two screens. Take this one, duplicate it, go into prototype, and then go from this screen to this screen, and make sure the transition is auto-animate. In fact, let's have this happen auto-magically and we just like resize this content. We would change this in some way, right? So maybe yeah. she would be down here. Text could move over a little bit, up. yeah. Yeah. But you, you just get to have fun, right? This is awesome. Like this is gonna, you know, fly off that direction. I gotta make sure it brings like the jet stream with it. So I'd move it over here, but that's the idea. So this will happen really fast. In fact, I'll actually loop it back uh, really quick. <laughs> And let's give it a delay of, uh, you know, four seconds. Ah, no, you know, never mind. Let's just tap on it. That's going to be easier. Tap, auto animate. You get the idea. Go. So that's what it's. Nice. It's just yeah. super simple. So. I agree. Kevin Lee, the cloud transitions. It's really fun. This is a good, this is a good topic to do and auto animate with. You know, we're talking about like an airline. Definitely, yeah. Quite well. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of expecting to have a little. It's also really nice, this whole auto animate feature. It's, it's kind of really encouraging, uh, you know, encouraging designers to, to kind of think about transitions, think about motion when they're actually designing. Because I think one of the things I always had a, had a problem with, especially starting out, was like, you want to design something and make it look really beautiful. But then, mm -hmm. how do you get from this stage to you know to the next stage? How do you get from page A to pay, page B, uh, and how does this actually like come to life? You know, and that's mm -hmm. I think this feature is really really good. Yeah, I agree. Mm. I'm not so I think airlines make the mistake of, and this is something that you've been kind of keeping in mind. It's like, uh, you know, just if for anything, how does something yeah. like make you feel, right? Yeah. So how does it? Not only what it is. But it's just really, it's, it seems really sexy. These yeah. photos and everything and this clean design, it's like, yeah, that's something I want to be like associated with. Sure, for sure, yeah. You know? Definitely, it yeah. It looks really good. And I think there's uh, there's always a lot of statistics about just, you know, like just conversion rate optimization. I think even just having clean and easy to understand and usable screen design will just up your chances of people using your product, right? Mm -hmm. so it's, it's just basic expectations, you know, to... Yeah, because this stuff, it's nice that we have the ability to track it. Yeah. You know, you know when you push the new design live, yeah. how many click-throughs you're going to get. Yeah, exactly, that stuff. exactly. That's, that's, that's really, really important. Um, yes, uh, custom, you are using a custom grid. Yeah. Robin really likes your work. I like Great. I think I saw you earlier. I wanted to tell you that. Ryan Ford is groovy. Ryan did a video yesterday too. He did auto animate. He can probably attest to how how easy it is and how fun it is. But I think people get that mixed up. It's like it's never like it's you know, it is what you're selling, but it's also what what are you providing to the to the potential customer. Yeah. Definitely. You know, it's again just uh, 
hate to. How many perfume ads have you seen that, sure, they show the perfume bottle at the very end, but usually it's just two sexy people rolling around on the beach. Oh yeah, for <laughs> you sure, know? all the time, Because right? you're like, oh, I want, oh, if I buy this perfume or cologne, it's gonna give me like say, some abs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. But that's like, it's marketing. Definitely, it's yeah. no more evident, like it is the most evident when it comes to like perfume ads and stuff. Yeah, for sure. That's why I was looking at these airline websites thinking, you know, are they selling the right thing? Like, yeah. just real fast, and I know we're good. Lufthansa, this is actually an awesome image. We saw some of this, which I think this is really cool. Clean, you know, this this kind of says escape. Yeah. Um, you know, and take that, say, just, uh, you know, to United sort of execution. First of all, I hate, this is never gonna happen. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> it's never gonna be empty like this. No. But this is not exciting to me. This is actually a better image. Sure. Like, show me what your service is gonna get me. Yeah. It's gonna give me these pictures of Nepal, because I've never been there. You know, all, all this, like, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. This is the end result that I'm after. Yeah, this is not where you're gonna go, right? Not a cramped That's... seat. Yeah, I don't, exactly, I'm yeah. not interested in a plane, I'm interested in going to Nepal. Yeah. So, anyways. And then in general, just the call to action, right? You need to know, the first thing you wanna do when you click on one of these websites is just be able to go, is it a round trip, one way ticket? You know, where are you going yeah. to? What do you want to do? That's like, mm -hmm. I think um, if you They've go- They've recently you updated this, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I think feel. so too. If you switch back to Lufthansa right now. Yeah. What I really like about just the first part there, you know, it gives the user, it, it, it makes him, you know, look right at this, mm -hmm. this kind of like um, screen right here. And it's, and it's, uh, it's, yeah, very nice, very nicely, very nicely done. Yeah. I agree. That just because again, it's in front of the the big image, and yeah. again, super clean. I didn't wasn't expanding, expecting to find rental car or hotel. Ooh, look at that! Zip, zip, zip. See, that's what I was talking about earlier. When there's just mouse overs on desktop, that kind of like gives the user, <gasps> yeah, you know, it, it gives you a purpose to be there when you're using it. You know, you see that the website is. It's kind of there, interacting with you, you know, waiting yeah. for you to respond and like, to actually. Oh, you want this? Oh, oh you, you want this? Yeah, oh, we'll exactly. Yeah. Oh, you want this? yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that's really, really that's important. <laughs> I had to highlight you, Lufthansa because they are the ones that got you here. Yeah, shout <laughs> out to like, Lufthansa. Yeah, very. Shout out, shout to, out to Lufthansa. Lufthansa. <laughs> yeah, they, they got me here last last minute. <laughs> United, not so much. Yeah, it's, it wasn't their fault, you know. It was the pilot in this case. Yeah. And here again, I'm working with that opacity. You know, you either have the sign up area here, or you can click on the login, and then it, it'll kind of like switch over. I'll, I'll show that in a second. These are all elements that we can prototype and auto animate tomorrow. And really, we have like five minutes or so left. left? Yeah, but this is, you have to admit, like people are tuning in thinking, oh, you must have started this like yesterday. You had a, you had a couple hours just, no, this is all today. Yeah, exactly. Which is super impressive. I'm, I'm blown away. Thank you, yeah. I'm loving it. I'm sure everybody like, Sasha, cool lesson. Yeah. I mean, I guess, yeah, once you have kind of like <laughs> the grid figured out that you want to work with and you have your style guide, you know, like this part here, uh, it's a lot of, Iteration. It's a lot of trying out new things, and a lot of like exploring styles and, and breaking the grid and layouting different stuff. But it, it does kind of like flow really well, and it's a great. It's it's really great to work in XD on this. Because I used to, I actually used to only design um, in Photoshop for the for websites. And uh -huh. It's it's really it's it's a lot of it's it's easy to like you know treat images. You know, and, and you want you want some some cool noise or some cool blur effect on the images. You can just all do it in one in one kind of software. But it does get really heavy after a few like artboards, right? Yeah, and the nice thing is that you can actually still design if you're comfortable in Photoshop. Design what you want, like design one screen. It might get a little heavy, but you could open that PSD up right in XD now. Exactly. Yeah. Sure. And then yeah. and then roll with it. Yeah. Plus, it's more realistic because, like, to some degree, you could be creating something in Photoshop that just can't be executed on, like, in a browser, for instance. For, yeah, sure. Because Photoshop can do anything. Definitely. Mm, browser, not, not so, so much. much. <laughs> not so much. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Kevin Lee says this is amazing work today, and hopefully, you could do like a, a little, a little recap as you 
kind of finalize where this is at. Tomorrow? Like to, like right now. I, oh, sure, I really yeah. want to like take a step back and like, let's just take a look at everything that you start, like well, where you started, which is quite frankly here. Yeah. You know, here's some sketches. You know, sure, you had an idea of what you wanted to do. You know, but again, look at all these various notes yeah. that you started with. Yeah, these you, are like re this is just you. You can sit. You, you can sit down with your client. You can just go to any like coffee shop in the office. Doesn't matter. You know, and just start like scribbling stuff down. It's, uh -huh. That's that's how you kind of like build the site map of what you want to do, right? And then after that, you can just kind of like your jump sketches. Up, jump right and into. And you your did. Steam. You jumped right in. You yeah. did have your style guide uh, page. Like this helped yeah. out a lot. This helped a lot, really. Yeah. This probably helped, like between these notes and this, and and the photos really helped everything kind of come together. Definitely, yeah. Because then I feel like you were like doing really smart choices with the grid. Yeah. Everything like really intuitively. So Definitely, yeah. Can yeah. we go to the first? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Kind of this is through. kind of like the welcome screen. I can turn the grid off here, so we can kind of look yeah, at this. Yeah. Let's look at this and all of its gorgeousness. Yeah. Kind of start here, right? This is like the welcome screen. You start scrolling down, and as you can also see here, right? You know the black box you were talking about earlier that comes in here. This kind of stuff, it, it it would animate in once you kind of like scroll down, you know, come in. Okay. Um, we have some information about the product. Then we have an image carousel here. You know, easy steps of how this product actually works. You know, register for free, choose what you want to do, enjoy the anticipation. Um, a nice big call to action. You know, explore more. Uh, and I think it works really well. The image I treated this yeah. in in Photoshop. So if you really go if you go close, you can see. It's very, it has some nice like noise and blur mm -hmm. texture on top of it. Yeah. So that's, I think, really cool. Then a glance at the product in general, you know, what, what are you actually kind of like buying from this service? Uh, and this would hopefully in the future, since this is actually all being developed, um, have a drag and drop interaction here where you can drag and drop this part and kind of, uh, and kind of, you know, open open this bottle. Um, another so cool clean. I love that color, that that base, that resting color there. Yeah, it ties in well with the the photo right below it. Exactly, and then you get like this this area here. You know, this like kind of like these these boxes that all kind of come together. And you can see even just like if I just turn this off, how much of a difference it makes. You know. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it looks super it's empty. It's still fine, right? It. And it, but it looks super empty without it. And it's just by mm. adding something so simple. Soft. It's like easier on your eyes, I feel. Oh, yeah, for color. sure. And I love how you said it's a base. You know, that's kind of like where this bottle is resting on, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Christian um, says it's lit. Cool. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is basically the, the intro page, the landing page for this product. Uh, and then I jumped into. Um, you know the pricing, the pricing page, which I think is also really important. People need to know, mm -hmm. you know, what what are you buying? What can you what can you buy? So we have these three different, you know, mm. subscription it's options. Kind of like here's the most popular one in the center. Exactly. Yeah. It's kind of where we're trying to drive the user towards the middle one, the bigger one. Yeah. Uh, that's that's kind of the goal here. Uh, and again, you know, this is also this is something, um, I got really inspired by the book I showed earlier mm. where. You know, this is all the same font family, right? Mm -hmm. This is all this chap typeface. But you're using different weights, different sizes, but it still works really well together, you know? And that's, yeah. that's something that... And, like, you kind of had, like, it's actually cool that, what is that, a, bu a book? A book? A book? Is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> I don't know, this weird thing, and it has, like, thin slice, but it was giving you examples of how to use this font, so yeah. you're not going in like blindly. Yeah. Like, here's some different ways to use this font, and you've kind of had that in the back of your head, like, yeah. oh, this is a per perfect opportunity. And you know, we were talking earlier about, like, you don't want to copy anybody's work who's already out there. How many people but, who work on the web don't get inspired by analog products, you know, by analog books? Yeah. There's so much yeah. you can learn about layout from analog books mm -hmm. that just Analog books <laughs> from, <laughs> from, <laughs> from books that kind of you can just mirror onto onto the screen, you know, and that's something I think really really important and cool. Um, uh oh, thirty. We got about what do we have? Thirty seconds left. Thirty seconds left. Okay. Oh, um, boom! Sign up. Yeah. Take I, my money, as Chris says. Yeah. Just shut up and take my money. I, <laughs> perfect. Take my money. 
This is really good. Tune in nice, tomorrow. Chris. We're just going to be like tightening this up and taking it to the next level. You think it's one way today? Super happy to have yeah. you here, yeah, it's Marvin. Super how great did you to be here. enjoy your first time streaming? Good times? Yeah, very good. Very new. I've never done it before, but I'm super happy I'm here. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. You promise really you're cool. gonna come back tomorrow. I'll promise I'll Lock come back doors. tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I feel like you will. We have a fun day. Stay with us. Hang out with us all day. We have Olga up next with Gus. Cool. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, guys.